Nigerian sprinter Blessing Okagba remits her lawyers as a study and decide the next line of action after Athletic Integrity Union disciplinary panel issued her 10-year ban for doping. Okagba says her first Instagram page that she will inform the public very soon. River State Governor Yeson Wike Lambas, his Cross River counterpart Ben Ayade, and police for attempting to prevent People's Democratic Party from holding its rally for the Ogoja Yella federal constituency and the Akbabuyu state constituency by elections in Kalba this Saturday. And as always, we'll be looking at the National Dailies this beautiful Monday morning. A very good morning to you. It's Set of Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're back for another week of interesting conversations right here. And my name is Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bepo. It's good to be back on your screen this Monday morning. Yes, Messi looking flawless as always. Um, I don't know what the secret <laughs> is. No secret. I cannot fail to notice the new hair. The new hair is... Uh, uh, oh, come on. Yes, but indeed. thank you so much. Yes, I mean, for um, a change. For all those listening, you have to pass through me. You have to pass through me to get to her. All right. I anyway, um, it, it, it was quite um, an interesting weekend. The politicians were politicking, you know, those who were catching crews, like young people will say, we're catching crews. And uh, um, we're, we're, we'll start things off with a look at the trending stories um, around the country. Um, one particular one that, um, you know, got a lot of people upset, really upset, um, happens to be uh, the story of a 14-year-old young Nigerian girl um, who was allegedly uh, extorted by airport officials. It's, um, it's a, a story that for those who travel through the airports, you may, you may not be unfamiliar with it, Mercy. You know, um, but this, this is a 14-year-old girl. Well, her mom has been, has been you know, she used to keep quiet. Uh, a chef, Imoteda, um, that's just a name we, we got, um, has accused the officials of the airport, Lagos Airport, as a motel, Mohammed International Airport, of attempting or actually extorting um, her daughter some amount of money, a 14-year-old daughter uh, who was traveling to Canada, traveling to Canada. But this lady went on to Twitter to, you know, reveal this uh, allegation, let's call it that. Um, and uh, she's a Canadian or Canada-based Nigerian, um, alleging that Nigerian immigration officials took all the money and, and, and this is really worrying if it's true. She took all the money from her teenage daughter, someone traveling from Nigeria to Canada to go meet her mother, 14 years old. And the mom says that the immigration officials at the Motala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos, Nigeria, took all the money on her daughter. You know, this is a, a minor, 14 years old. Well, this is what she said on Twitter. Let's just quote her. My 14-year-old daughter is traveling by herself. And she put 14 in caps, caps lock. Immigration took all her money before they let her go. They took money from a 14-year-old uh, girl. Didn't even leave her with one kobo, she says. Or 1,000 naira so she can buy food while she waits. How wicked. Found officials, he puts that in, in a hashtag. Uh, I'm so angry. A child. She says, why are you stealing money from a child? And you took all of it and didn't let her call her mother. This is, this is really sad. This is what the mom said. Of course, we would need to get some response from the, uh, the airport authorities. If that is out already, uh, you know, we'll get it to you. But, um, Mercy, this is, um, is a really sad one, you know. For those who, like I said earlier, travel through the international airport in Lagos here to go outside the country, they may not be unfamiliar with such experiences. No, so so this is what it is. I mean, a lot of people are quite shocked, and some persons actually are still in doubt of that situation because usually the airlines uh, should take responsibility or take responsibility for minors. They accompany them mm -hmm. through the entire process. So it's really, really heartbreaking. I mean, you also know that you have to establish all of the facts. Mm -hmm. But not to say that there's no possibility that this probably would have happened. Because, mm -hmm. like some people will say, this is Nigeria. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> I think it was, can help. it was Files who said that song. <laughs> now, and, you, you know, know. when Files say this is Nigeria, a lot yeah. of people say, oh, this is Nigeria. Anything can happen. Because um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you um, saw that video of a foreigner, apparently... Uh, skin was actually white. He came into Nigeria and oh. he was laughing. Waving the flag. Italy. He, no, it wasn't waving oh, the flag. Okay, some the time documentary ago. guy. Yeah, okay. okay he was yeah, talking yeah. badly about, you know, all of the experiences, how yeah. he has to pay at every checkpoint mm -hmm. and now mm -hmm. he, he has to get extorted and all of that. You know? So originally, we <laughs> yeah. talked about that on yeah. this platform. Yeah. I remember how I felt. I felt very pain because I felt like, I mean, you can come and talk about my country like that. That's me being very patriotic. But okay. to, to be very okay. honest, okay. these things do happen. Okay. But like I mentioned, mm. I'm hoping that an investigation would actually put out to all of this because mm. re that's a minor. And we should be out there looking out for these minors and children mm. because up until the age of 18, they're mm -hmm. still kids. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we should be looking out for them. And the airlines should, usually airlines actually take care of these minors. They accompany them on through the entire the process. process. So I'm, 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 I'm really saddened and uh, it's really sad to hear that but mm -hmm. you also need to establish, you know, the fact of truth. And if you look at um, previous experience over time, you want to might just want to agree because of one or two experiences that have happened with our airports. And so there's also an element, I mean, likely an element of truth with all of that because this is Nigeria mm -hmm. and we know how things have been done over time. And yeah, yeah, there's a lot there. The mother um, of this 14 year old girl. I feel um, pain uh, on her behalf. Yes, yes, yes. It, it's, it's, I mean, a mother for a mother to go. I mean, how, how is she supposed to, to make her way home from the airport in Canada? I feel so sorry. How is she her. supposed to take care of herself, you know, through um, the other airport as a transit, for instance, where she needs to buy food at some duty free store. How is she going to survive? It is this and halfway around the world, talking about North America. You know, but um, uh, um, the mom didn't just uh, say these things. <laughs> she, she went on to, to lay curses on, on the airport officials. And, uh, um, you know, for a lot of people, the reaction would be well, this is what we've been facing. Thank God someone has gone through it to um, put it out you know, on social media, such that it gets uh, such attention. Um, but this is what we face every day. Uh, I mean, uh, some people have called up uh, some police officers, actually criminals, armed robbers, because people are sorted on the road every day. The only reason that a policeman uh, or a corrupt, let me not say, because some of them are not corrupt, a corrupt police officer will um, extort money from you or still take money from you is because he has a gun and he has a uniform. So that's robbery. It's daylight robbery. So when someone robs from you with a gun. What is that? Mercy. With when someone gun? robs you with a gun, what's that? Robbery? No, with a gun. Armed robbery. Armed robbery. So some of our police officers, you know, are, are engaging in armed robbery, really. That's what it is. It's armed robbery. Because you hold a gun, you have a uniform, and you say, give me money. And someone has to give them money out of fear. Mm -hmm. Out of fear. So True. that's... that's uh, so what is the difference between you and the armed robber? You know, um, I keep going back to the code of conduct Petty for public robber. officers enshrined in black and white in the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, 1999, as amended. This code of conduct is there. I know other agencies come up with their personal or you know, individual code of codes of conduct, but this one is there. And uh, like we, we mentioned, you know, even with the 13 billion Naira case and other cases that have, have been revealed so far, um, that, that the, these, this code is consistently flouted by people in government. And it's not been enforced. You know, the Code of Conduct Bureau has become a tool for political um, witch hunt. It, it would seem. It would seem. You know, and um, the, the, if, if the Code of Conduct Bureau was on its game, all right? I mean, we look at, look at the head of the Code of Conduct Bureau who has been having questions to answer for a long time. Uh, only recently we heard that, um, you know, some, some official statements were made regarding that to the effect that he would have to answer and, and also leave. Okay. But, but, but... If you look at the fact that the Code of Conduct is not even busy every single day, it simply means that it's not doing its job. And a lot of federal agencies are not doing their job. I mean, on Saturday, um, I had complaints at home, on Saturday, complaints at home, that um, the palm oil that uh, was, was bought from the market in the house was, was tasting awful and spoiled the entire food that was cooked at home. You understand? For me to enjoy, you know, I like I like my soup. I like my soup and my swallow. You know, and um, and uh, they, they, I asked. I asked so, so this is let's get to it's where getting this personal. Is I asked for a bono soup. 
on Saturday. Cause I want to really enjoy my bundle soup and okra. I like I like it slimy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can't get good at fun here. So <laughs> you know. So but, oh, but okay. I said I said why is why is Navtac not going into the markets in in Lagos? Because you have a lot of unadulterated, adulterated rather palm oil. So well, the point I'm making, just in a nutshell, is mm. that a lot of federal federal agencies, government agencies, are sleeping. Really sleeping, and people are using these as their personal ATM. That's what they do now. So it brings us back to the conversation. I mean, you remember a time where we had uh, Christine, mm. uh, when we talked about the fact that we have collectively destroyed the country in whatever wrath that we're faced with right now. It's not just dependent on one person. And I will say, we're just a reflection of who we are. The leaders that we have is just a reflection of who we are. If you show you have corrupt leaders, you have a corrupt society. And it, so, I feel like. Too many conversations. I see some people put out tweets and posts and all of that, and then they make comments about the president. Not to make an excuse for the excesses that's going on with the current administration, whether the president or governor of a particular state. But let's be very realistic. We are governed in parts and bits and pieces, and you cannot take that out. So at the end of the day, so you have a combination of we are a nation because you have different families making society, and from there we're making a community and all of that, we become a nation. And so if at the different sphere of control and where we have influence, we're not doing what is right. We're not doing the right thing in the words of uh, Cobham's. Uh, then we'll do what do you expect. So it's the people. So it's the people. We have always been the problem. You can't blame this on President Muhammad Buhari. You can't blame this on the governor of a particular state. For instance, Lagos State. It's not on, uh, you know, the Lagos State government. So you have, so we all have a share in all of this. The fact that we have decided to be corrupt people. If that um, report is anything to go by, which I would think that a mother of a 14 would not definitely want to just uh, become a superstar on Twitter or any other platform just because she wants to become a superstar. But it probably would have actually been something that's very hurtful for her to put out. But however, we're hoping that uh, the relevant authorities would investigate this and um, those behind all of this will be brought to book. Quite yes, unfortunate yes. because we believe that the airlines are supposed to protect we, we, these we, minors yes. from start to finish. Let's leave the airlines out. This, 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 so, so it's a general and, conversation. And, and, and also, I'm just saying. Else, also, we talk about the people, the people, the people, mercy, yeah? The people. But the thing is this, government is even enabling these things. I mean, you have government. Government is meant to, to make sure society works. True, the correct. people are the victims, really. People are the victims. That girl is part of the people. The mother is part of the people. See, when President Mohamed Buhari came into power, I, I personally, I'm not saying because people say this, personally, the me guys on the streets of Port Harcourt, the points I knew where they were collecting money every day, making returns to the CP of the state. And I, I said, until it stops, the IJP is part of it. Until it stops, even it continues, it means it's part of it. They get money from the streets and send it all the way to the top. Did that in, stop? Everywhere in Port Harcourt. Now, when Buhari came to power, the first week, the first week, I had, I had, I had to drive around you know, my usual activities, and the points where I know police in River State have turned into an ATM point where they mint money from the people. All right, they were not collecting money. It was all. So what changed? Yes, sir. Because people were, were, were not sure. They were all the corrupt people in government were afraid. They thought that Buhari will come and clean the system. He came and ran on a campaign of zero tolerance for corruption. But after one week, after one week, they just saw it was business as usual that this president was not who Coffee. they thought he would be. So and I'm, it is sad because Coffee. Nigerians know that Buhari from the 80s ran what you call kick out or kick, war against indiscipline, rather. All right, war against indiscipline with the Diagmo. I, I had opportunity, Mercy, just a quick one, because this message has to go to him. I had an opportunity to travel out of the country in that period. Mercy, I can tell you that when I came back, the usual guys who would stop me on the in the airport, the immigration guys and all those guys wearing their ID cards who have nothing to do there, were on their best behavior. I know someone sang that song, on their best behavior. But of course, after a week or so, they realized that it was business as usual, and it's become worse. Right now, it's worse than it was under the PDP. So, it's so, worse. So, so, Kofi, so the yes, president I, has disappointed. I'm sorry, uh, but I totally understand the points where you're coming from and uh, the fact that, yes, you have a president who's controlling the country. But, I, it, it, you know, to some extent, we're governed in 
like I said, in bits and pieces. And so you have a federal system. Whether or not the federal system is functional is another conversation for another day. But however, you have state yeah, government, you have local government, and then you week. have the federal government. My, no, no, that first week. week. And that's it's on the premise that the president came. That's the reason. <laughs> but see, this is what I'm saying. saying. This we have succeeded. But would you... No, 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 but let's be very realistic. Mm -hmm. As much as we want to blame the president for everything, we can't blame the president for everything. She so we have yes. governors who were in charge of state. We have, you know, apparatus. We have things that were within. Yes. Government, so we have an agency where you have government who's supposed airports. to be. Look at last time, uh, customs and uh, I thought you were fan, fan were fighting. They were fighting each other over who has access to. See, see, see. It's it's been a fa as far as corruption in in the, in this country is concerned. The hopes that Nigerians had for Buhari and even these guys who were locking up mercy. It's it's a total fiasco. It's worse now. They're, it's free for all. Can't you see the headlines in the papers? And I'm just saying that you know, as much as we want to blame the president for all of this, it's a collective contribution. We have succeeded in building um, structures that are not very strong, and so you seem to have yeah, in weak the, in structures. The 1980s, when you had war against. No, but that's, that's what it is Was because today. Today, this, yeah. today you, you do let, what they want coffee, to do. Can, can I please? Yeah, okay, okay. So I'm you sorry, have. Mercy, um, no, that's fine. So yes, recently, I'm sure you saw um, that video at a petrol station where Kate Henshaw was in a fiasco with someone who actually. Um, these are the little things that we're talking about. You go to a bank. Why don't you follow the queue? What's wrong? Okay. I'm just saying that okay. all of these things so, contribute. So no, but no, you cannot no, blame the president for that. Knowing who we are, knowing who the people can be and how the people can be. Yeah, you have, you have, you have these things all over the world. But what happens? I tell you what. That person, okay, who is jumping the queue in Nigeria, who is driving against traffic one way, hmm? when they they leave the border, cross into another country, Ben Republic here. Yeah. Ben Republic, yeah. They'll be very obedient. Immediately they just see the gendarmes and then they see how things are. They have a border, Ben Republic, they have a a, a a checkpoint like a toll gate and they'll be obedient. They will do everything because they know that the gendarmes will not will not will do an igboho on them. So why why is it that when people <laughs> leave this country, including our politicians, the queue Do you want right? me to answer that? The queue, they do everything yet. Yeah, tell me why. So the reason is that uh -huh. we have a system that is working. Where? We have, where? No, abroad? wait, wait, wait. Why? It's because we have weak institutions and we have strong men. And that's it. And that's why somebody will go to a queue who, of a who's bag. Who's going to and strengthen the institutions? No, but we have to. Who, it's, who is going to strengthen the institutions? Collectively, it has to be all. Is it you? So, for instance, you if, I, I mean, for instance, if. We have, we have, we have to move on. I mean, for, <laughs> Our we, we have to move on. But I'm just saying, for yeah. instance, if I am calling the affairs, I mean, you walk up to a counter. Mm. Uh, should you jump? It doesn't matter who you are. You should follow the queue. That's what we're saying. It's okay. Yeah, you we're, don't need we're, the president we're, we're to the tell country. you that. We, we, uh, mm. We're here. It's Let's fine. See. We're, we're moving together. So um, if you say we are the ones to change it, I agree. But people will not change. So what happens? They, they vote people into, into power who they think can make things better. You understand? And when these people get into power, if things don't get better, then it's on them. But anyway, uh, in South Africa, it's um, been going down. Um, you know, anytime we hear stories coming from South Africa, we always hold them uh, be afraid because of the history of um, uh, mob violence and xenophobic attacks on people from other parts of the continent of Africa, including Nigeria. Well, this one is coming from the uh, Nigerian Union in South Africa. This is a union of Nigerians who live in that country, um, announcing the death of another Nigerian in that country. This is really unfor unfortunate, uh, following a vicious attack on him in his shop. Uh, pictures you've seen are uh, pictures of previous uh, xenophobic attacks. Um, well, the Nigerian Union South Africa president, he is uh, Colin Singbo, uh, announced the death of Mr. Nicholas John in a statement issued from South Africa on Thursday. Um, the deceased is said to be an indigent of Ogun State and uh, was uh, attacked by a mob in his shop in Kimberley. Kimberley uh, is in South Africa's Northern Cape and uh, we're told this attack came on February 12th. Um, so this is really sad. If you go back in history, um, records show at least 128 Nigerians have been killed in South Africa um, since 2019, Mercy. And on the 12th of December, as, as recently as that, uh, Olushola Solari was killed by hoodlums who attacked him and collected his uh, money. Um, unfortunately, it's really sad, uh, but this man, who is the latest victim of these attacks, was married to a South African woman who has, was delivered of a baby barely uh, three months uh, ago. Really sad one. Really sad one. Um, uh, according to 
the Nigerian Union in South Africa, uh, the president of that union, um, the death of John uh, on February 15, uh, he disclosed that um, on February 11, the Nigerian was attacked by a South African gang for allegedly buying a stolen laptop. So this is what the NUSA president is saying is the, is the reason for this attack. Uh, he was beaten alongside his friends who they believe were accomplices in buying that stolen laptop. While the South African criminal who stole the laptop and sold it to John was left unharmed. This is really sad. Um, and it's another, you know, evidence of man's, man's inhumanity to man. Really sad one. Well, you've actually said that. And it's, it's, it's a serious issue. As much as we constantly talk about the issue of police brutality, which is also a global issue, and then you find that, that you know, man, it's man's inhumanity, this has been ongoing for a very long time. Unfortunately, you want to begin to look at the efforts of the Nigerian government in ensuring that this doesn't happen. Is there anything that can be done within the space port? We still, it gets us back to talking about the issue of strengthening our institution, even in Africa. And so even in South Africa, you have all of these killings going on. Where there's a mob attack on a particular person, a killing is killing. Mother is mother. So the laws should actually not be discriminatory. These persons behind all of this should be brought to book. And so it, so it goes on. It's, it's more like it's becoming a very global issue. The issue of humanity, the issue of respect of human rights and tolerance mm -hmm. and all of that. So we constantly, I think we need to, you know, be strong and great on preaching all of this message yeah. of respecting human rights, being tolerant and all of that, and the laws. Because I'm sure that in South Africa, uh, you, have a, you have laws governing all of this. There's a government, there's a system. And so the system should not be discriminated. The system should be very effective in, you know, in order to ensure that those who are committing all of this crime, if the government is not in support and behind all of this, then this person should be arrested, they should be perpetuated. I mean, they should be made to face the wrath of the law. Whether or not you're from Nigeria, you're from you know, Afghanistan, wherever it is that you're from, from. If you kill someone, I'm sure that the law uh, should be brought out to you. There are penalties, there are issues that can be taken care of. So yes, that's on the one side. We need the South African government to be on top of a game, strengthen her institution. As Mosul was saying, we also need to strengthen as. But um, you come back to Nigeria. What can the government do to protect her citizens outside of Nigeria uh, and, and, when you I have her citizens in Nigeria? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I know you, you guys are not going to allow. Um, uh, uh, Abike Dabri rest. Abike Dabri is not the Minister of um, Foreign Affairs, even though, you know, people, uh, sometimes it comes like that. Uh, but she usually gets mercy, uh, the the public attention when anything happens to her. She's not a Minister of Foreign Affairs, you know, but, but she put herself in this position to be sort of responsible for, uh, you know, whatever happens to Nigerians abroad. And um, mercy, if we must be honest, South Africa, has its own internal security challenges, you know, and sometimes you hear these things, you would wonder, okay, is this just one of those 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 things that happen in South Africa? I mean, their own their own celebrities are being killed by the criminals in that country. Um, you know, you can go down back to the story of Lucky Dubey and how he was killed. I mean, on on, on Thursday, uh, a prominent Nigerian uh, former footballer celebrity, uh, Pastor Ida Peterside, um, who is a former Nigerian goalkeeper uh, and a personal friend. I had to put up a testimony on, on Facebook that um, an attempted car theft, his car, unfortunately for the, the robbers of, of that, his car, there were two of his daughters in the vehicle um, and they sort of like um, chased the, the thief away. You know, but, but it's clear from the reports that um, there was a South African involved, the person who stole the laptop, he wasn't, he wasn't uh, um, uh, uh, harmed or killed, you know, not that we won't see anyone being, one being killed, but uh, if that, that preference was given, then it means that, uh, uh, of course, the nationality of a, uh, the deceased may have been taken into account in deciding how far to go. You know, so hopefully um, we, get, we get some action from the Nigerian government and South African government as well to get to the bottom of this. Um, there's another one. Let's go to um, Oshun State. Uh, and, of course, it's been going down. We've given um, uh, quite a number of minutes or hours of a conversation on the breakfast to the um, APC uh, governorship primaries or primaries basically in that state that held on Saturday. Uh, no love lost between uh, Raul Faragbe Shola, former governor, and um, his successor and his uh, former chief of staff, uh, Boye Gao Yatola. Um, I mean, Faragbe uh, <laughs> uh, Shola was trending on Twitter on Saturday. I'm um, trying to remember the name that they gave him. It's Baba something. I can't remember what they gave him. But um, uh, Oyetola flawed Adeoti. Um, um, who is perceived to be uh, the preferred candidate of um, Aregbe Shola, and he did a lot to 
to um, campaign against uh, Oyetola. You know, so this is the result. Um, let's see what happens at the end of the day if there'll be any defections or whatever. But that's the much you can take on the trending segment right here on the breakfast.